for me, it starts as like a little seed crystal of an idea of like, I wonder what it's like up this drainage. Well, I know that's the drainage. That I enjoy a challenge, but I have a strong respect for nature. I don't venture out into the wilderness unless I know I'll be able to come back safely and leave the backcountry as pristine as I found it. It feels dangerous and it feels humbling and it requires every bit of respect and preparedness and skill that you have. Awesome. Planning is key to a successful backcountry trip. Okay. Angels, let's focus. <laughs> a lot of getting psyched for a trip for me is, is just pouring over the maps and wondering to myself, what's that gonna look like? Here, there's a really cool waterfall, although that would be a longer hike. Mm -hmm. I have a it's feeling a that day. we're gonna be limited to an area that's about like this. Yeah. <laughs> we need to figure out a route, and since there are no trails or signs in Denali, it's up to us to determine where to go and how to get there. This is like a really awesome canyon. Nobody tells you what to expect, and you've gotta figure it out, and that's what makes it so rewarding too. Doesn't water fall out? It looks pretty tight right there. Yeah. yeah. Without trails, our progress will be slower. So we need to be careful not to be too ambitious with our route selection. You come up on top and then walk the tundra down. Even if you plan a pretty straightforward trip, things can happen. Steep scree slopes. As we plan our route, we discuss possible backup options in case we need to make a last minute change. It's heartbreaking sometimes when you're out there and you're so excited because you're a couple miles from camp and it's gonna be awesome and then there's a bear right where you are going to camp and you can't camp there. Here we wait for a few minutes to people. As you can see with the rivers, they're going to open up uh, and be more... Brave. When we get our permit at the Backcountry Information Center, the rangers help us mark out areas we need to avoid. Do they waterfall at all? This one. That well, one does? Yeah, that's the huge one. You're going to have these medial and lateral moraine strips. Again. Marking the map with unit boundaries and wildlife closures is vital for following our permit and for avoiding sensitive wildlife areas like nests, dens, or feeding sites. But, um, so I'm just trying to figure out wildlife closure. At Denali, nice. rangers don't watch for overdue hikers, yeah. so we always make sure that somebody outside the group knows our plan and will contact the park service if we're missing. It's, it's got a hint of yellow. This? How are we splitting it up? Do you want to carry the bear can? Or? Now that we have a plan, we divide up gear and get packing. Who wants? I can take mm -hmm. a first aid kit. Like Do you want to take the take cook set with yeah. the stove? Making it into a ritual, developing a method is really important. Meds, chapstick, trowel. With so many things to plan for, it's easy to forget something. I follow a personal checklist of reminders to keep me on track. Socks, gloves, boots. To be ready for the Denali wilderness, I bring gear that will prepare me for a variety of situations. Yeah, you have to be ready for anything. It's just an air mattress. So these are the boots I take out. I always take sturdy boots and trekking poles to keep me stable during river crossings and on rough terrain. Really important for being able to get across a river safely. And I've got a little bit of duct tape here. A GPS, it has gotten me out of some sticky situations. I really like having gators. If I'm going through water that's not really deep, these will keep water out of my boots, my cook set, my water filter, and also some backup chlorine droplets. My clothes. If I'm starting a trip under blue skies, I'm gonna get rained on, I'm sure of it. When preparing for weather, I follow a few basic rules. One, layer up. I pack multiple layers of clothing that I can put on or take off according to my activity level and the current weather conditions. Of course, some good rain gear. Two. Choose clothing material wisely. I pack clothes made of moisture wicking synthetic fabrics or wool, which will keep me warm even if they are wet. My uh, thermal layers. I avoid cotton because when it gets wet, it retains moisture and doesn't provide the insulation I need. This stuff sack itself is not waterproof, so I'll wrap a big plastic bag around it. Waterproof everything. I pack my clothes and sleeping bag in plastic bags so they stay dry even if my pack gets soaked. I've got my map, my compass, my GPS. If something goes wrong, we have to be prepared to rescue ourselves. I always bring an emergency kit with first aid supplies, signaling devices, and survival gear. I've got a lot of different medications, second skin for blisters, bandages, these steri strips, rolled gauze, an emergency blanket, signal mirror, maybe on your compass, waterproof matches, a headlamp, a flare, 
Food is next on my list. So, yogurt covered raisins. Cheese is pretty important. The tasty bites. One of the major limitations on food is your bear can. I like to repackage my food in plastic bags to cut down on bulk. I also make sure to bring enough fuel for all of our cooking because no campfires are allowed in the wilderness area. I separate out anything with a smell because it might attract bears. In addition to food, this includes toothpaste, insect repellent, lip balm, or anything else with a scent. All food and scented items must be stored in bear-resistant food containers. Bear cans are required for all backcountry trips as a way of preventing bears from getting at food and garbage. I've got the tent, the bear can, the stove kit, the cook set, fuel. Everything can now go into the pack. All right. What lies ahead is still a mystery, but thanks to thorough planning and packing, I feel confident about exploring the Denali wilderness. This is really hard, but he says once you get up a little further, it's, it's really fast. It's never old. It never gets old. 